extraordinary email the other day from our viewer Liu Khan. Uh, I'm not going to give his real name. <laughs> That's his online handle on YouTube. And it's titled God's Nature, Love and Samsara. I mean, this is just fantastic because he has expressed the highest realization in his own words, not copying from me or anybody else. He's inspired by Blake. He's inspired by our emails. But anyway, let me just read it to you. Hello, kind sir. I was thinking about God, wanted to share it with you. How can God be anything less than itself? Obviously, it couldn't. That means there can never be a subset to define it. God can't be defined. It's beyond everything, as much as it is that very everything. God must be infinite. Not only that, even numbers are infinite as well. Yet the sum of even and odd numbers is a greater infinite set than the set composed of only even ones. So God must not only be infinite, but must be infinitely infinite. There can never be an infinite greater than it. Now, I don't know how many of you are math heads, <laughs> but the mathematics of infinity are such that you can have an infinity that's greater than another infinity, and then you can have an infinity that's even greater than that. But the nature of God is the infinity of infinities, infinity to the infinite power. So there can never be anything greater than God. It's just not possible, mathematically, philosophically, or in any other way. So here he has set the context for the rest of what he's going to say. We're dealing with something indescribable, indefinable, inconceivable, unknowable, but which can be experienced. So let's go on. If God is infinitely infinite, it can't reject anything. It loves it wholly. It can't separate from itself, not even by a single quark forever. I now understand better Blake's insight. Eternity is in love with the productions of time. The productions of time. Kala, time. Kali, aspect of the goddess. Productions of time. Sangsara, her cycling maya. So the productions of time are in contradistinction to the nature of infinite eternity. Yet, God is in love with those productions. Even though they're imperfect, even though they're temporary, actually that's part of their charm. How can the perfect exist without the imperfect? How can the eternal exist without the temporary? How can the infinite exist without the finite? So in other words, maya or sangsara, the productions of time, are actually necessary for God's existence. Eternity is in love with the productions of time. God is in love with her productions. But of course, what else could be? Infinity must be one. Its nature cannot be anything else than love, because it's one. 
God is birthing itself infinitely through the love relationship between eternity and the productions of time into every form by an infinite value of permutations. It's love loving love by an infinite degree. This is such a great insight. It's so amazing that God and goddess have created this world where all the living creatures go on multiplying without any further uh, management. Huh? They do it spontaneously. <laughs> so love is loving love. God, the infinite, as the soul, loves the infinite as the body and keeps on producing more and more spontaneously. Huh? What a great creation. Always samsara is described as painful, as pain. But how could it be anything less than love, than perfection? It's impossible for it to be imperfect because it's one with God. But if it's perfect, then it also must be good, therefore loving therefore not painful. Why do we perceive it as painful then? I see again Blake. If the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is, infinite. For man has closed himself up till he sees all things through narrow chinks of his cavern. The avidya obfuscates perfection. The avidya obfuscates perception, masking love in pain. But even here, how could there be any mistake in anything? God would turn imperfect. So avidya must also be right. Isn't this the logical root of fate? If avidya is right, it's a calculated mistake. God's introducing error in order not to be errorless. Infinitely infinite must encompass its own negation, yet it transcends it. This is fabulous. <laughs> you see, he's explaining it in his own words, using his own reasoning. Yes, inspired by Blake, but not limited by Blake. He's seeing it directly. Like Ramana Maharshi said, Brahman can be understood only through inference. In other words, it cannot be perceived because it is the self. How can the self perceive itself? And the self, God, Brahman, is complete. So it includes even non-Brahman. It includes even finite creations, imperfect creations, pain. It includes everything. So this is its completeness. Avidya can only be relatively bad. Sangsara can only be relatively painful. Yet, following God's strict logic, its logos, they seem to be ultimately revealed as good and loving. The goddess must also be infinitely loving and compassionate. She's Maya, but she's also Leela, going subspecie aetinatis. From eternity's perspective, how could be the weight of the infinite cycling forms be anything heavier than a play? How could there begin to be fear? Fear of what? So you see, there's nothing really painful. It's actually beautiful. Just like the cherry blossoms. You know, the Japanese, especially the Zen people, they love to make poems about the cherry blossoms because they're the perfection of beauty, yet they're simply temporary. So how is this possible? You can't have beauty without having limitation. So he has grasped all these things <laughs> with his own reasoning, his own inference, 
his own logic. He's figured it out for himself. And really, this is the only way it can happen. You can't become enlightened by listening to somebody else. At some point, you have to sit down and figure it out for yourself. And finally, I feel I don't actually really grasp it now, but I might begin to see how, from your perspective, the world never existed to begin with. Well, this is the meaning of Ajatavada. Ajata means the world never was born. Now, how can that be? Because obviously we see the world in front of us with all its variety and abundance, huh? all of its unlimited pastimes, lila. Huh? So how is it possible that this is never born? Because it exists only as a mirage in consciousness. Even for Brahman, even for the Absolute. So this is really the truth. He has, he has managed to grasp it with his own reasoning. This makes me happier than anything. <laughs> because somehow or other, we have uh, come into contact with someone who is also intelligent, who can also see things the way they are who can also use his own brain to understand these things and get a pure individual insight into the nature of reality. Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti Aum.